go for it! <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to The Dark Stuff. It's me, your buddy Dave, the host here at the channel. And unfortunately, again, I have another uh, memorial video to make, or memoriam, I'm not sure of the term, but uh, another rest in peace video. Just after I did the one for Jesse Zazu that day, I, um, I, I have another one to do. And it's weird because the night that I found out about Jesse, I, I had a, a really early work appointment the next morning, so I went to sleep really early that night, probably about 9.30 or so. I woke up at like 2, 2.15 in the morning for just some inexplicable reason and couldn't fall back to sleep, so I, um, I decided to check my phone. Big mistake to do when you're, when you're trying to fall back to sleep, but I did. I checked my phone again, and... I checked Instagram and right there, the first posting that I saw was from one of my good friends named James, who is one of Grant Hart's closest uh, friends. And he showed the picture of Grant playing with some cats, saying, rest in peace, Grant Hart. I was just floored. I mean, I could not believe that it happened. I, I, it wasn't totally out of the blue. Uh, because, like I said, he is friends very close with, with Grant. We had spoken about a month or so before and he told me the prognosis on Grant's situation and that he was given a terminal uh, diagnosis, that he did need to have two different transplants, that he was getting very, very weak, and that uh, it didn't look good. I mean, a, a frail body can only handle so much and one transplant would be tough, two would be uh, virtually impossible. So it was sort of inevitable that this was going to happen. It just, when it actually did happen, of course, it was a surprise. So, gosh, what can I say about Grant Hart, his music, his art, and everything? I've been listening to his music now going back 30 years, okay? Back to 1987 or so, maybe 88. And uh, my introduction to Grant Hart was through Who's Du. That was his band. And a buddy of mine in high school, uh, my friend named Bob Nisi, gave me a cassette tape. It was a 90-minute cassette tape, both sides filled with the best of Husker Du. And it was called the best of Husker Du. I mean, we were Husker fucking Du. Someone had given it to him to turn him on to Husker Du, and now he was passing it on to me to turn me on to Husker Du. Once it did, I passed it on to somebody else to turn them on to Husker Du. And then, of course, I went back and I bought all of the Husker Du records. And I've been a fan of them ever since. And never was able to see Who's Du, unfortunately. Uh, they broke up in December of 1987. Well, their final show was December of 1987. They broke up officially in January of 1988. Oddly enough, what was supposed to be the final show on their 87 tour was in Omaha, Nebraska, at a place called the Ranch Bowl. So I could have seen what was going to be their final show. But apparently the story goes... They had played in Columbia, Missouri the night before. The show was such a disaster that it was basically equidistant to go back to Minneapolis from Columbia, Missouri as it was to drive to Omaha to do the final show. So they just canceled it and went home. And that was pretty much the end of Who's Du. The entire time that I saw Grant Hart perform live was always as a solo artist or with his uh, second band, Nova Mob. Hi, we're Nova Mob, Michael Kriego on drums, Tom Merkel on bass, my name is Grant. And really, my obsession really kicked in probably about 1990. And at the time, Grant had a solo record here called Intolerance. This is it. This was his debut, actually, from 1989. And this album is so different than what Husker Du had sounded like. And in all fairness, Bob Mould put out a record that year that was also pretty different from the Husker Du sound. He kind of went back to the Husker Du sound shortly after, but Grant never really did. That was something that he could be admired for and not wanting to tread new ground, but it was also something that you could maybe say, you know, it hindered his career uh, from a commercial perspective. Certainly not artistically, he did some great stuff over his life. So 
I'm not going to rehash and go through all the records and, and everything. I mean, I have a stack of CDs here. Look, I'll just show you. You know, a stack. Another stack with some 7 inches. There's some CDs, some more. A uh, big stack of uh, vinyl here with, all, with some Husker Du records. I've got them all, okay? And um, I just thought I would just sort of talk about uh, the impact his music had on me. The couple of times I was able to uh, meet him, I did have some stories, you know, attached to that. And, uh, and, and that's really it. And just sort of lament the fact that, again, another person that I really, really admired uh, has passed away. So, like I said, I started getting into Grant's music full time, uh, you know, probably about 1990. Uh, Who's Credu was over. So now I was focusing on the two principal guys, Bob Mould and Grant Hart. And because Grant remained in Minneapolis and I was in Madison, Wisconsin at the time going to college, Grant uh, and Nova Mob used to play in Madison all the time. I mean, I saw them a bunch of times. I'd see them play in Madison, Milwaukee. I have saw them in Chicago at Lounge Jacks, number of different places. I saw Nova Mob probably 10, 12 times more than any other uh, more than Bob Mould solo, more than Sugar, more than definitely more than Who's Could Do. I never saw Who's Could Do. Um, more than any other entity, and it was always really enjoyable. Right after I first was getting really into Grant, my friend James that I mentioned um, had struck up a relationship, a friendship with uh, Grant, and over the course of the next 25, 26 years or more or whatever they became like really, really close friends. At the time though, it was just sort of casual. So when Grant would come to town, James and I would go and meet up with him and, and hang out and stuff. And at first, you know, I, I was sort of standoffish and nervous because it was like someone I idolized, you know, and here he was sitting there. At one time we went back to James's apartment and hung out, drank beer, smoked pot, whatever. I don't know what we were doing. It was a long, long time ago. This is probably 90, 90 uh, 91 or so. 92, I don't know. And I was sort of like, you know, reticent. I was sort of shy. I, I sort of stayed back. I just kind of absorbed the whole thing. So I don't feel like I made a real connection. I did have Grant um, sign my Who's Could Do Everything Falls Apart original pressing LP, which at the time was very, very valuable. Now, Bob Mould had already signed it the year before. And so when Grant saw that, I don't know, maybe it triggered something. This was still in his drinking and drug days. He hadn't sobered up at this point. And he wrote like all over the record. Roses are red, violets are blue, you know, all this shit on the back of it. And he, he wrote some AA, you know, I'll call it anonymous expression on the back. I mean, he just littered it with shit. I didn't know what to make of it, but I was just like, whatever. I got Bob and Grant's signatures on this record. Uh, so what do I care, you know? It was a weird experience, but I got over it. Next time Grant came to town, was probably February of 90, 1992 and James got Grant to it was the it was the night before my birthday I, I turned 21 at midnight that day and James was able to convince Grant to sing happy birthday to me from the stage fucking amazing we'd like to join everybody at here in our, our station and wishing Dave a very merry happy 21st birthday Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear David. For the rest, wait till you're 22. Right before, I remember I was saying, Grant, like, what, what is your, he had just put out this, this single, Shoot Your Way to Freedom. And I couldn't understand the lyrics. It's a brilliant song. It's real heavy and noisy and stuff, and it was a great rocker. And and I just said, hey, what, what exactly are you saying in that track? And he just sat, stood there, looked at me, and recited the lyrics. Uh, this particular record, the Nova Mob, A Shoot Your Way to Freedom 7-inch, um, I saw him make these. 
Okay, these are hand stamped by Grant in his studio that he had in Minneapolis in the early 90s. Again, my friend and I were there and he was shooting these with a BB gun so that everyone would be slightly different, you know? So he'd line them up, shoot a BB gun, it'd go through a couple and then everyone would be slightly different. So there's the, the hole in the back. So everyone is different on this one. So this is a totally unique seven inch. So again, had another great experience. I didn't see or hear from Grant for a couple years. I moved away, I moved back. Madison, probably 1995, maybe I wanna say, 96. I was back in Madison and I had my record label going, Mafia Money Records, and one of my bands was opening for Nova Mob at a place called Club De Wash. So again, it's been a couple years, I hadn't seen Grant, I hadn't seen Nova Mob. I get to the show, find out that the drummer of the band had quit the night before, perhaps a day or two before. Now, as you probably know, in Husker Du, Grant was the drummer and also a singer. Him and Bob Mould shared singing and songwriting uh, duties, but Grant was also the drummer. But when he left Husker Du, pre-Dave Grohl, I should point out, okay, he transitioned from drummer to frontman, singer, guitar player guy. So he wasn't doing the drums anymore, didn't want to go back to the drums. But they had a gig here, and there was no drummer. So Grant, I think without even rehearsing, I think he just instinctively knew what to do, got back behind the kit and played a Nova Mob set on the drums, and their second guitar player just did the soul guitar. It was incredible. Now I heard Grant was unhappy, he didn't want to have to do that, he didn't want to revert back to being the drummer, but at the same time, that was probably the best Nova Mob show that I ever saw, if I'm just being totally candid, because it rocked harder than uh, any other Nova Mob show before. The key thing to understand about Grant's post Husker Du work, and again, I'm not going to talk too much about Husker Du. They're one of the greatest bands in the history of music, top five, guaranteed. That shouldn't even be a debatable point, you know? What the Beatles did for rock and roll, Husker Du did for punk and alternative music. They just, in the sh period of six years, six, seven years, they expanded the boundaries of what they had done by such an extreme degree that you almost can't believe this was just done over the course of a couple albums. Husker Du went from an extreme hardcore band on their first album, Land Speed Record, to a melodic um, band by the end of their career, still maintaining their punk edge, their strong independence, their DIY status, all of that stuff. But they were able to forge this new sound that became the blueprint for what we now know as alternative rock that started in the, in the late 80s, early 90s. There would be no Pixies, there would be no Nirvana, there would be no Green Day, there would be none of these other bands if it hadn't been for Who's Du. But I think, unfortunately, when discussing the career of Grant Hart, people do kind of overlook his post uh, Who's Du career. I didn't, I was there the whole time, okay? I saw it. And one of the differences is, you know, Bob Mould from Who's Du is a brilliant guitar player, a guitar hero, if you will. Just by virtue of the way he played, he was able to maintain that sort of sound. And when he made the band Sugar, it was sort of like Who's Du with big production and all that. Well, Grant always shied away from that. And he was a good guitar player, but not a brilliant guitar player, not the same level of talent that he maybe was on the drums. So you really, the focus of Grant's music was his songwriting. And it is extremely good. And Nova Mob did, I'm trying to find the record here. Okay. This was their debut full length album, The Last Days of Pompeii. And this is the original version. It's been remixed and remastered, I believe, uh, in a new version that came out a couple years ago. I still haven't picked that up. I don't know why, but this is the original version. It was, again, a concept album. If you know about Who's Du, you know that Zen Arcade, one of their most celebrated records, was considered a concept album. Now Nova Mob was kicking it off with a new concept album. This is a great record. Production's a little thin. But basically they found out that the record company ran out of money and basically went broke within a week or two of the album's release. So it got zero promotion. I don't want to neglect to mention, I interviewed Grant about two years ago in 2015 and the point of the interview was to promote a show he was doing here in Omaha, but what I wanted to do was to get him to go point by point on his post Who's Du career talk about his memories of the of the albums 
talk about um, the songs, the people he was playing with, his recollections of the making of the, the record. And uh, that is on YouTube. I'll link to that. Um, it's, it's about a 45-minute interview or so. I could have talked to him forever. I think he was getting sick of me. He was kind of like, oh, I think my phone's losing battery. I got to go. You know, he was tired of it, but I, I could have kept going forever. So we got all the way through the early 2000s um, in, in that discussion. So you, you really want to listen to that if you want to know more about his uh, post Husker Du career. By the mid-90s, Grant kind of took a break from doing the heavy touring and promotion and really for the rest of his professional career, almost until he died, he wasn't the road warrior that he had been in the days of Husker Du and, um, and Nova Mob. He did battle with uh, alcohol and drug problems, successfully overcame them, was sober for a really long time in his life prior to his passing. He was able to kick that. He did one album in 1999 and then I think it was almost 10 years before he put out another record. And the only reason I knew what Grant was, was up to, because he didn't play much outside of Minneapolis, he'd do a handful of European tours where his audience was bigger, but he didn't play that much outside of Minneapolis. And so I would hear from my friend, you know, oh, Grant did this, Grant did that. So I was kind of kept in the loop a little bit about what he'd been up to. But I think the general public, by and large, had kind of forgotten. And that's really, really sad. And I think that uh, you really need to, uh, that sort of wrong, historical wrong, needs to be corrected. I think people go, who's Gurdu? Then they go, Bob Mould. And whatever happened to that Grant Hart guy? And I think that's really, really just a wrong perception. And I hope people don't don't share it. It's what I think people think, but I, I, I hope they don't. Nova Mob. Man, did you feel the earth shake when we said that? Probably about, I don't know, 2010, 2011 or so, Grant was doing more touring. He came through Omaha and he flew in and uh, I picked him up at the airport. And um, <laughs> it was an interesting experience. I was just supposed to pick him up to the airport and my friend had alluded to, well, he may want to stay at your place if that's okay. And so I was like, okay, yeah, he can stay at my house. Turns out he did not want to do that. He wanted to go to a hotel. So I picked him up at the airport. I drove him to the hotel, saw him do that gig. And that was pretty much the last time that he and I met in person. Grant came back to town one more time in 2015, and I didn't speak to him. I saw the show, but I just kind of stayed back in the distance. I did that interview with him a couple weeks before, but I didn't really feel like going, hey, I just talked to you on the phone. Um, in addition to the Last Days of Pompeii uh, new version that I listed, the other stuff that Grant had been working on towards the end of his life was this collection here called Uva Review. And um, mine's autographed by Grant. And he gets it there. To Dave, best wishes, happy birthday, 2011. Okay. Grant's final album was this album called The Argument. It came out in 2013 or 14. And it's based on John Milton's uh, Paradise Lost. And uh, there's some also some tie-in with, with William Burroughs too, but I was never able to fully discern what that, what that was. There's a film called the Every Everything, The Music, Life, and Times of Grant Hart. You can get this on DVD. Uh, this is a record with songs from the... Um, from the uh, movie but you can get the the film on dvd or on uh it's on amazon prime you can watch it on amazon prime uh it's great and i think you should you get a real taste of his personality not always the easiest guy to relate to sometimes um he was very very highbrow and intellectual but he also had this sort of like really regular guy kind of a feel he was always just just a regular dude from from saint paul minnesota we are trying to look forward into the future rather than to dwell on things that have happened already. You know, when you add together the Husker Du years, his solo material, Nova Mob, all the concerts I've seen and everything, you know, Grant was a huge part of my 20s. Then again, another part of my 40s. There was that sort of lost decade where we didn't see or hear much from him, so neither did I. Um, but this man has had a, a huge impact on my life and um, uh, on the music I listen to now. It came about in 87, 88 when I was transitioning really from being like a metal kid, which is what I was listening to growing up, into more punk and independent music. 
and uh, in many ways Husker Du and, and the replacements were like my gateway into that. I've always thought that, you know, Grant was one of these unsung heroes and, uh, you know, I wish I could have seen him one more time before he passed. I, like I said, I did know it was coming to some degree, but again, you just never know sometimes. I mean, I, I've known people who they were given six months to live and they're here six, seven years later. So who knows? It's not always a death sentence. Unfortunately, in this case, it was for Grant. But I would say if you're looking for some places to start with his music, you're definitely going to want to start with Who's Du, of course. And I would say you could start here with Candy Apple Gray. Two singles off this album were Don't Want to Know If You're Lonely and Sorry Somehow. Those are both Grant Hart tracks. Great, great, great record. This was their major label debut, 1986. And then every Husker Du album. I mean, get Flip Your Wig, get New Day Rising, get Warehouse, get, uh, you know, just get everything you can from Husker Du. Land Speed Record, just beware. Don't make that your first purchase. That's their debut. It is extreme hardcore. Every song is like a minute long. It's just a fury of just noise. Uh, it's different than what they sounded like. They gradually, they, they quickly moved moved out of that scene but at the point at that point they really wanted to be like you know the fastest band on the planet you might want to try if you can find this uva review it's a good sampler of grant's post who's do work i would say pick up the nova mob last days of pompeii ecce homo this is a live cd a live acoustic cd from grant hart earlier in the video i talked about a time where uh, i saw nova mob and the drummer had recently quit so Grant played the drums. Well, over the course of that tour, eventually most of the band was gone. And by the time they hit Seattle at the end of the tour, Grant was doing solo acoustic shows at that point. And this captures that from that um, perspective. This is a great album from 99 called Good News for Modern Man. It features probably Grant's best from a production standpoint. It has this big produced sound. It was great, unlike anything that Grant had done solo. This album has been re-released on vinyl with a different cover. Um, I have that, but it's on my wall. It's been autographed, so I just sort of I kept it framed. But this is a great album, especially if you're leery of kind of the lo-fi production. You want like a bigger sound. This would be your one to get for that bigger sound. Um, and then, of course, the argument. Um, I, I would definitely snatch up um, if you have the chance. Anyways, uh, man, it's been a tough week. If anyone else, anyone else that I like musically dies in this week, I'm, I'm gonna have to, you're gonna have to put me on fucking Suicide Watch or something, because this is getting bad. Anyways, um, rest in peace, Grant. It was great meeting you the couple of times that I did. Your music has meant a lot to me. I very much appreciate everything that you've done for me and for the world. And uh, again, check out this man's music. Don't, don't just let this go by and go, oh, I never really heard of the guy. I guess I should have. Do it. Make it a point. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Take care. Bye-bye.